Gray bald heads, large round eyes, a flash of light, and someone disappears. Alien abductions have been reported for decades, but one man claims his incident was the real deal. Was he actually the target of some extraterrestrial visitors, or was it all a ploy to gain fortune and fame? This week's episode is The Travis Walton Incident. Up, up in the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? I just wanted to tell you that before you got here, I was watching Celebrity Family Feud. <laughs> I love Family Feud, except I can't stand Steve Harvey. I'm the opposite. <laughs> oh, no, he's I such love... a sexist asshole. Oh, well, I just really love Family Feud because I love how sad Steve Harvey is just inside and you can just tell. <laughs> My favorite Family Feud host was Ray Combs. Okay. Who, very sadly. Yes, he, he tragically took his, took his, took his, own, his life. own life. Yes. I remember as a kid, my mom told me that when I was far too young to be told that. <laughs> Yeah, it was really sad. I remember Richard Dawson was a Family Feud host. I, I would hope that in today's day and age, he would not be so forward. He would get arrested. <laughs> Rightfully so. For those of you don't, who don't know, Richard Dawson was the Family Feud host in the 1960s who just smooched women. Lo- I mean, it was, but they also... Half of them liked it. Half of them liked it. The other them, half were very uncomfortable. They recoiled at his yes, touch. Yes, and I would have been on that side of things. He, was he a, didn't care, though. He w- went in for the kiss no matter how they felt He was a it. horny, anthropomorphic baseball mitt is yeah. what he looked like. <laughs> he did. He was very leathery. Yeah. Very, very leathery. And now we have Steve Harvey. Here's you, an idea. Have you ever Googled Steve Harvey without a mustache? It's awesome. Does he really, did he really shave it or no, is it just someone photoshopped? photoshopped. Uh, my, what I was going to say though is. I just want to hear your reaction okay, to it. Okay, one second. <laughs> he looks like RuPaul. <laughs> he looks like the mask. Someone could have. Someone yeah. took the eyebrows off. Oh, too. that's that does not look natural. I love uh, Keenan Thompson. Steve Harvey is one of my favorite yeah. Steve Harveys. What I was gonna say is, how about we get a female host up in the great. family, uh, up in the feud? Because we had the double Rich, F. Richard Carn was from uh, Home Improvement. Al Borland. Yeah, he wasn't bad. No, he's fine. He's all right. He's, he's adequate. okay. We They're all one. none of them, in my opinion, have compared to Ray Combs. No, I felt he was very funny and affable. But when I was on hiatus in yes. the suburbs, because we had a big storm thank you, here. Thank that you for your patience. Rocked the, the city of Dallas like you've never seen. My God, the streets are still. They're covered in tree branches. I'm like, this is never going to be cleaned up. I can't walk the dogs. It's all, it's just. It's everywhere. In and, any, any park or any place where mm-hmm. there's multiple trees, it's just tons of down trees. Like they're never going to clean this up. Uh, Irving Sports Complex, which is out by DFW Airport, they said it's just like a lake. Yeah, there's a there's a football field, or not football, a soccer field, and baseball field underneath the water somewhere. It's like the lost seat of Atlantis. <laughs> it sucks. There were bleachers. Did you see the bleachers at the park of the mm-hmm. road? We're just in the street. They just flew away. We were very stupidly in the car when all this transpired. Oh my god! <laughs> On our way to a splash pad. Okay, well, I said, the splash pad. Hey guys, let's go to the pool. I even checked <laughs> the weather. It did. It said it was supposed to start raining at six o'clock that night. Yeah. And then we get in the car and we're just driving into blackness. And I said, you know what? I think they're probably going to close the pool when we so. get there. <laughs> and then out of nowhere came this white squall quite frankly and we were i was like oh my god i mean visibility was zero and we were at a stoplight and i was like just don't drive don't drive but everyone else started driving so we had to drive i mean it was you gotta get home you could well we pulled over into a parking lot okay tommy was like this is like a disney world ride the car was just shaking back and forth Mm -hmm. debris was flying everywhere lucky a thing didn't hit your car a porter potty fell over (laughs) it was wild hopefully there was no one in it Hopefully he got pie, and the whole time we're just trying to act cool because Ella's in the back seat. Yeah, you can't scream, and the baby will get upset. Yeah, the and weatherman said it was as if a bucket of water was just dumped in the mm-hmm. city center of the city, and then they the, called it a rain bomb. Yeah, the out. It which just, sounds like a really fun 
bath uh, bath bomb. Yeah, or a shot you'd take in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, the, the rain bomb. The rain bomb. Burr, 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 burr. No, but it was, it was, I was taking a nap and I just looked out the window and was like, that's a hurricane. All right. <laughs> well, that happened. Yep, it so was. It was straight asleep. up a tropical storm. There were 70 mile an hour winds. It was wild. So thank you. All that to say, thank you for your patience. Yes. Because we were, Christy was out, we were both displaced. I was staying in a hotel downtown. Christy was staying with her mom. And yes, in the suburbs where not a drop of rain had fallen apparently looked like nothing. but i love because we don't have regular tv so okay. anytime we're at my mom's we watch cable. regular tv lots of game shows we were watching to tell the truth which is oh, has now been rebooted with the guy from blackish i can't remember his oh name. i didn't know that uh the to tell the truth came back i mm-hmm. love i'm a big game show network oh fan. i love game shows love get tattletales I, is my favorite game show i my, one of my dreams is just to be on a game show oh, circuit man. just to travel it's so snoop dogg was one of the judges on oh, to tell the yeah. truth According to my mom, he's all over the game show circuit right now. Oh, is now. he? I he's love. on a lot of stuff. I love game shows. Yes, yes. I love game shows, I do too, too. man. I'm into all that stuff. I would love to be on $100,000 Pyramid. Yeah. I think I would do well at that. Yeah, I think so. Would not do well at Wheel of Fortune. That's oh, my I'm a, hardest. Oh, I'm good at that. I, I, I like Wheel of Fortune. That's my hardest. I don't family like watching feud. it. I don't like playing it. Oh, really? I like Mm-mm. Family Feud, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy. I like anything where I can guess stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't, man. I, the ones that Family make, Feud is great. That'd probably be... Supermarket Sweep. Oh, dude. We also watched... I love watching Food Network over there. Do too. Uh, Guy Fieri. I'm obsessed with him. Supermarket. It's not called supermarket. It's Guy Fieri. Grocery games. Grocery games. Guy's yes. grocery games. So it was all Father Day themed. So oh, they fun. had fathers and their kids doing it. Aww. And it was very cute. Yeah. And Guy would help them at the sweet part. Oh, he always he does. He would just run alongside him telling them what to get, which I like. It's I not like him. an actual competition. He wants them to get as much money as possible. I'm a huge man. I'm big, big Guy Fieri Oh, fan. I love him. Yeah. love him so much. You know who else is? Huh. <sighs> what is her name? The, she's the host of Nailed It. Oh, Nicole Byer. Yes. Yes. She's recently yes. on Pete Holmes. I was listening to that. She talks about Shout out to Tommy she... Brown who told me to wa- listen to You Made It Weird with Pete Holmes. And Pete I've Holmes been... is Tommy's husband. Nonstop. If he ever listening. leaves me, it will be for Pete Holmes. I, was, I have been nonstop listening to Pete Holmes since I started watching Crashing for the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, you hadn't seen it before? Nope. You just told me to watch it and I haven't it's watched it. It's very good. It's very good. It actually did not get renewed. So, it'll... <gasps> so it's over now. Mm-hmm. You, got, you guys should see the look. There's on my four face. seasons. It ends at a good spot, though. Okay, but it would have been nice for it to get renewed. What also. the hell, man? Yep. But it's all about being a comic in New York. I'm about to go to New York this week. Mm-hmm. Very excited mm-hmm. about that. I'm going to go to Brooklyn to see Lonely Island. So if you're going to be at the Lonely Island concert, <laughs> holler because I'll be there on Saturday. And uh, Andy Samberg and who else is in it's, that? Uh, Akiva Schaefer and Yorma Tacone, who I talked to Yorma Tacone at South by Southwest. Oh, nice! And he said nice. Pee Wee's Big Adventure made him want to be a comedian. It was very sweet. Oh, but I that's a formative one of oh, the movies yeah. in my formative years as well. Love that movie, mm-hmm. but I love Lonely Island so much. So I'm going to New York, and I have not been. You since know who else does? Joy. Joy loves Lonely Island on the DCH playlist. It's always for a good year. It was. <sighs> I can't remember which song it was. Something about being a pirate. Oh, the Captain Jack Sparrow song? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was Michael always, Bolton. That was always on. <laughs> like, I had to listen to that damn pirate song. So much. Why have That's it? really one of the only... I'm not hugely familiar with them. Oh, so yeah. I don't know they, a lot I mean, of their stuff. They're, they're actually... It's good music, but it's all funny. Like, yeah, they're funny. Stuff, so but they, they're also talented. So. I haven't been back to New York since I went in high school. So it's been... I've minute. only been once, and I got engaged while I was there. <gasps> no way! So it was, Tell me about it. I didn't never heard this story. We, Wait, do you think I'll get engaged in New York? Probably not. Just, All the members of Lonely Island are married. <laughs> well, maybe you'll change that. Yeah, I was to you say, never, they'll see me. Maybe you'll wreck some homes while you're there, oh, in addition to seeing some good music. We were there for the Del Close Marathons, which is an improv like a festival. festival. Mm-hmm. Yes. We actually weren't performing, but a lot of our friends were. Mm-hmm. And like 15 people were going, and we just said... Oh, yeah, we'll go to New York. It sounds like a good time. This was before the baby. And I had a feeling he was going to propose because Mm -hmm. it was kind of something that I just knew was on the horizon. And I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, this is a big trip. Like, trips are a fun place to do Mm -hmm. that. So, How long have you been dating? Oh, man. Like three years? Okay. Something like that. We got engaged in 2014. And we, yeah, like three years, I think. 
So our friend Terry Catlett, who we were rooming with, knew because Tommy gave him the ring on the plane. Okay. And said, you can't tell anybody. This is happening. I'm going to give you this. I love Terry. He he does not keep secrets well. Oh, God. He did not tell me. But he immediately, upon sitting in his chair next to our friend Alicia, who was also going, said, you can't tell anybody this. (laughs) But in my backpack right now, I have an engagement ring. So already, multiple people on this plane knew before even taking off. He grabs the flight attendant. Yeah. Can you make an announcement? (laughs) I'd like some peanuts. Don't tell anyone. (laughs) Yeah. So I think we'd been there for a day or two doing stuff with friends and we had planned for it just to be like an us night one of the nights and i thought okay this is probably when it's gonna happen i still wasn't 100 percent sure so we're getting ready in our hotel room and i look over (laughs) and in the pocket of tommy's jeans is just the biggest bulge (laughs) <laughs> and it was it was way too high to be anything other and than not a good not the good kind of not wolf. the kind that you know you you might and not expect. the kind that they sang about in the too close song by next <laughs> no not that one and it you was feel also a little poke coming through yeah on you that song is so vulgar it's so gross. when you really and but it's the song is about getting an erection yeah. rubbed on you yeah it is and it's, which in the right circumstances I love a good erection a, to be rubbed yeah. on yeah it's a very like catchy yeah. smooth tune yes. though so you kind of don't even it's it sneaks up on you it's like much my like neck. his erection well. What really happened? It's like my neck, my back. You're listening to it and you're like, D- D- oh my God. Yeah. You're like, good Lord. <laughs> so we're getting ready. So I see this and I think, oh, okay. The next thing I look over, it's not there anymore. The bulge is gone. The bulge is gone. <laughs> Usually it's a bad thing if the bulge is gone. <laughs> so then we leave. We go to this restaurant, great food and everything. And our plan was to walk through Central Park to get to Serendipity. Oh, yeah. The chocolate. From the John Cusack movie. From the John Cusack movie, yes. So we're walking through Central Park, and he's on his phone, like on a map, and there's a place that he wants to find. Mm -hmm. We can't find it. Uh Uh-oh. So we sit down on this bench, and I hear this rustling. And I look over, and there's a huge rat (laughs) right next to me, like huge then there's there's several rats new york has a lot of rats you guys that's what, that's what i'm gathering from our friends who are comedians that live there they are it they aren't shy rats either they're just Aggressive. out and about they they are there to do yeah we're in their territory it's like if you go into the ocean you have to respect the sharks yes when you go into the manhattan you have to respect the rats well i'm glad to know we're closed-toed shoes so yeah so then we get up i'm like okay there's rats so we get up and we keep walking and we find this bridge, and it's over this water. There's a movie being filmed, like right on the other side of this did water. Did you find out what clearing. I know we never did. It was and even a pornographic film. Yeah, they were fucking. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of fucking, uh oh. On this bridge are two people mugging down so hard, making out, just like legs wrapped around each yeah. other all in it get it and we're just standing there and it's like do we walk over this bridge like tommy wanted to go on the bridge he it's wanted not- to pro- did he want to propose on the yes bridge? on the bridge it's not that big <laughs> of a bridge and this is happening and so we just like walk over the bridge and we just stand by these trees and he's like do you think they're gonna leave soon i'm like i don't maybe and he's like are you gonna are you gonna remember that these people were making out on this bridge forever well, that this was quite a few years ago, and I still remember. I don't think you can forget so something like that. So they finally leave, and so we go to the bridge, and we're looking out at the movie being recorded and everything, or whatever it was, and he says, I love you. I say, I love you, love you. He's like, gets down on one knee and says, do you love me enough to spend the rest of your Aww. life with me? He pulls the ring out of his sock. It was a huge box. It had caused a giant blister all over his ankle, oh, like no. so big that he had to contend with then. We were still there for like two or three more days because oh. this wasn't a tiny ring box. It was wooden oh. and it was re- it was a really nice box. He had it shoved in his sock all night walking around New York because he, he, he could clearly see it in the pocket of his jeans. That's the sweetest thing yeah, ever. Yeah. So heard. then we got engaged and we went and had chocolate 
uh, Sundays and stuff, and then we went and met up with some friends. That's and so it was nice. Really nice. It was super sweet. Yeah. Oh, Tommy. It was. He's the best. Well, so I'm it's the only time I've been to New York. Top that, Heather. I'm gonna linger in the streets of New York and see if someone will propose to me. We'll, well see. Well, maybe a rat will. <laughs> There's many, and they, as many people think, as pr- get proposed to there, one of them's got to have a lost engagement ring. It's true. I don't know if a rat would propose or just take me for his bride. Like, I don't think they ask. No, they just take Like you. the pizza, you just make off with it. <laughs> yeah. Good God. Well, speaking of getting abducted yeah. by a rat king. Oh, man. You know what's worse than that? Getting abducted by aliens. I think I'd r- prefer aliens over rat king, quite frankly. Uh, you know what? It depends. If the aliens are anything like Kate McKinnon on SNL, where they, uh, <laughs> they bat around your knockers. <laughs> I'd be all right it's with it. It's one of the best sketches. It's my, it's my all time favorite it's sketch. So, on good. SNL. so, well, today, what are we talking about? We are talking about the abduction of Travis Walton. I'm Christy. I'm Heather. This is the one that Fire in the Sky, I believe it came out in late 90s, early 2000s. I thought it was older than that. Is it? Honestly, I don't remember. Well, this is the abduction that that movie was based on. It may have been 93. 1993. 1993, yeah. It's the movie that was based on. So if you've seen that, even though the film was grossly exaggerated, but this is the story that that was based on. I did watch a lot of interviews with hours of footage of Travis Walton. Interviews. He looks like a man that would be abducted by an alien, <laughs> quite frankly. You just get that. You look at him and you go, OK, I get it. Yeah. You have that look about you. The aliens are when they're when they're trying to pick which one they're going to take. They're like, get a goofy looking one. No one will believe yeah. him. No. Uh you never see uh, the CEO of Google come out and say, well, I was taken upon a spacecraft last night and they did things to my body. Anyways, uh, we're launching a new platform today. Like no one. Sales uh, numbers look up. Yeah. It's no, never, like hot, uh, Yale graduates don't come out. It's always. It's not a, a surgeon, a respected no, surgeon. It's always. And not that there's anything wrong with being a, a logger. I'd love some loggers to come to Dallas. take care of all the debris around our city yeah, right come, now. Come grind some mulch for but us. But it's always, I mean, I guess, to be fair, uh, surgeons usually aren't performing surgery out in the forest where aliens might be looking true. for someone. True, true. So maybe it's just a thing of convenience. If you're a logger or, you know, a, some sort of a forestry worker. You you know what you're getting into. It's There's true. a chance you're going to be abducted by an so alien. One of our uh, listeners sent me some insurance information that there is alien abduction insurance. Oh yes, and there's also ghost insurance for your house. Yes, you can. You and apparently there was a hotel that bought the ghost insurance. A woman was thrown off of the second story. Uh, off of, I think it was indoors. Anyhow, they paid the family out like a million dollars from the ghost insurance because it was quote deemed by adjusters that a paranormal spirit was involved. That seems oh, I was like, like it file. can't be legal. Give me that file. You can insure anything, I guess, if you're willing to take the risk. And the, well, I guess that the family didn't put up a fight. Oh. And say, no, let's really get to the bottom of what happened. They got a million dollars. Who cares if it was? Because I mean, what what other thing? Otherwise, it's her throwing herself off, and you probably don't get a payout. Yeah, I guess. Or someone else throwing her off that should be in jail. (laughs) Or a ghost. It's probably a ghost. You never know. Must have been a ghost, yeah. Well, let's get into this. Good old Travis. On November 5th, 1975, Travis Walton, a 22-year-old American logger, was working with a crew in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest. The boss of the crew was Mike Rogers, who also happened to be Travis's best friend, and the brother of Travis's girlfriend, whom he later married. So 22 years old, he's this is honest day's work. Mm-hmm. For the past nine years, Rogers had been contracted to work for the United States Forest Service. For this particular job, he and his men had been hired to thin out scrub brush and undergrowth from a nearly 1,200-acre area near Turkey Springs, Arizona. This job was the most lucrative contract Rogers had ever received, and unfortunately, it was behind schedule. Turkey Springs, Arizona sounds like a fun place I'd to live. I'd go to Turkey Springs. Shit, man. That sounds like a fun little place where who knows what could happen. There's a lot of fun. There's like Peter Pan, Arizona. They got loose with the names. Yeah. The further west you move, they got pretty loose. It's that, all that sunshine gets to your head. You get all burnt up. The men were all working overtime to try and get the project up to speed. Just after 6 p.m. on November 5th, after working a long and back-breaking shift, Rogers and his crew piled into Rogers' truck to make the drive back to Snowflake, Arizona, where they all lived. Snowflake, Arizona. Don't think they've ever seen any. Probably think, not. Think That's they've true. ever seen any snowflakes? No, it's just... Maybe it's ironic. Oh, I was thinking they were all unique. 
No, oh, yeah. Unique town. Oh, no, no one that lives there is the same, like the a un- snowflake. Unique snowflake. I like that. Not long after they started the trek home, the men reported seeing a bright, fiery light coming from behind a hill. At first, the men thought it was a forest fire, but as they drove closer, a large silver disc, approximately eight feet high and 20 feet in diameter, came into view that appeared to be hovering above the ground. Don't drive towards the fire. Call the forest yeah. service. Well, I guess maybe they felt an a obligation. Do you think that if nowadays this happened, they would just like live stream it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The aliens stuff have like, gotten wise to us. Stuff like this doesn't happen nowadays because <laughs> everyone's got a phone to document it True. all. Roger slammed on the brakes, and despite the opposition of his co-workers, Walton jumped out of the truck and started running towards the mysterious disc. R- yelling, dibs on the disc! <laughs> Shotgun! This is mine! When he got underneath it, the disc began to make loud noises, similar what? to that of a turbine, and started to shake from side to side. I'm sorry, did you say when he got underneath <laughs> the fiery disc? He went all the way underneath the spaceship. Uh, in the legal field, this is what we would call assumption of the risk. <laughs> you have placed yourself in yeah. a precarious situation, yeah. and whatever follows is on you. It's on you, buddy. According to the men, Walton began to back away from the disc, presumably to return to the safety of the truck. You know, like a normal Like you person. should. <laughs> when suddenly a beam of blue-green light shot out of the disc, illuminating Walton and immobilizing him. The men claimed their friend was lifted a foot into the air and thrown 10 feet, causing Walton to land hard on his right shoulder and his body to become sprawled limply over the ground. Terrified and fearing their friend was dead, the men fled the scene in a panic. There ain't nothing we can do for him. Run! <laughs> Jesus Christ, if go check ever, If you're ever in the car and I do something stupid, but then, like, things take a turn and you think I'm dead... I would run after and check the pulse. Thank you. Please don't just leave me there. There's, like, six people... Save that yourself. just decided, all right, we're done... <laughs> It wasn't a forest fire. Fuck him. Good God, go back and check his I pulse. I know. Come on. Well, you wouldn't if you've all planned an elaborate hoax. Interesting theory. Hmm. What if they were just scared? Or maybe that. Roughly an hour after this incident occurred, the crew decided to involve the police. Ken Peterson, one of the crew members, initially only reported that one of the logging crew were missing. However, when Deputy Sheriff Chuck Ellison met up with the men... They recounted what they had actually witnessed, two of them in tears. Oh. You know, you see your friend get almost abducted by aliens and thrown to the ground, and you're going to shed a tear to They sucked up Travi, and I couldn't (laughs) couldn't contain myself. Maybe they felt guilty because nobody went to go help their colleague. True. It's probably tears of guilt. That sounds like a sweet album name. Dope. Yeah, it's a Radiohead (laughs) album. Tears of guilt. Yeah. Tears of guilt. Ellison notified his supervisor, Sheriff Martin Gillespie, of the bizarre accusation, and Gillespie soon arrived with Officer Ken Coplin to interview the distraught men. Worried for his friend, Rogers was adamant that they needed to return to the scene in order to search for Walton, but three of the crew members were too upset to go back and instead headed to Snowflake to alert Walton's family and friends of the situation. With that, Rogers, the remaining crew members, and the police headed to the alleged abduction site. So now he's worried. He wasn't too worried when it happened. And I just imagine he thinks his sister's probably going to be like, what do you mean you left him? (laughs) What do you mean? You Um, left my boyfriend in the forest? A beam of light threw him to the ground and you didn't do anything to help him? You ass. When law enforcement arrived at the scene, they were immediately suspicious of the crew's story, as there was no physical evidence to back up the account. There was no disturbance on the ground where Walton's body was supposedly thrown, or any other indication that a giant flying disc had been in the area. Still, police and volunteers searched the area, but found no trace of Walton. Quick question. Mm -hmm. What would be a trace of a flying disc? Because it's in the air, so it doesn't leave any marks. Maybe burnt. Like burnt burnt ground. treetops? Yeah, since it's the heat from the... The beam? The craft is uh, <laughs> the craft heat is that what they call it the craft so. the, air, U, the ufo i don't know alien slang i don't either but some with i feel luck. like the craft is something they probably call it though the, yeah spacecraft aircraft shift ship i have asked several different people if they believe in aliens and 
almost unanimously I've gotten yeses. I believe in them. Yeah. But I think the the differing opinion is like if they've been to the U like US, if they've been to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> they've come to you come the to states. The, the states. I don't know if they visited the states. <laughs> I but think they have. My cousin was he's like the rational thinker of our family. So I was with him this weekend and I asked him and he said, you know, it'd be like if the if aliens came to Earth, we may not even notice. He goes mm-hmm. in the same way like a squirrel doesn't know what a car is. Mm-hmm. Like you just see a thing and you're like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah. We may all have seen aliens. And we just had no yeah. idea. And we're like, oh. It's just just dealt thing. with it. Yeah. They they walk amongst us, perhaps. Oh, good. <laughs> because they're in the triumvirate that we talked about mm-hmm. where they're between Colorado, Marfa, and Arizona mm-hmm. or whatever. Or New and, Mexico. And, yes. Roswell. Well, 10 miles outside of Snowflake, on a small ranch in the town of Bear Creek, lived Mary Walton Kellett, Travis's mother. When Mike Rogers and Sheriff Copeland arrived to tell her the troubling news, her reaction confused the men. Ma'am, we have some news about your son. Oh, God, was he arrested again for flashing? <laughs> no, he was sucked up by alien craft. Oh. What? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I <clears throat> sucked up by an alien craft. Hmm. Anybody want some tea? <laughs> she wasn't phased at all. No way. At first, she understandably asked them to repeat what they had just said. She then calmly asked if anyone other than the police and eyewitnesses had heard the story. Y'all been telling people? This odd response would later contribute to the suspicion that something other than a UFO was responsible for her son's absence. So you think Mary was in on it too? When all is said and done, I don't think she knew that they were going to do it, but I think that she knew it hadn't really happened. Interesting. Others came to Mary's defense, saying she was simply a guarded woman who, after raising six children by herself during particularly trying times, had learned not to fall apart in the face of tragedy. Just giving her the benefit so of the doubt. So maybe she's just holds her cards Stoic. close to her chest. She doesn't want to fall. You know, she's the the face of triumph and bravery of Hold, the family. So she's strong. holding it together. She's holding down the fort. For the next two days, officials and volunteers continued to search the area with helicopters, horse-mounted officers, and jeeps. But there were still no signs of Walton, and police now suspected that the UFO story had been concocted by the crew to cover up an accident or possibly a murder. We're getting to the Occam's Razor razor territory where you're like, okay, if it's not this, then the most likely scenario is that. Which I think maybe that should have been the first thing we jumped to. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Like, maybe we don't, for a few days, try and piece together and really prove that an alien abducted this guy (laughs) and just start interviewing the people that last saw him alive. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm no cop, but... You're a skeptic over here. I am. Crazy skeptic Christy. Oh, man. I hope that name catches on. (laughs) Walton had gone missing on Wednesday, and by Saturday, the possible alien abduction had made international headlines. Media, ufologists, and curious onlookers began to flock to Snowflake. Snowflake's overrun by the by the hungry sharks having a blizzard. (laughs) Hungry sharks of the sharks of the media. Among the visitors was Phoenix UFO investigator Fred Sylvanus, who interviewed Mike Rogers and Dwayne Walton, Travis's brother, who had come into town to help with the search. In the interview, both men expressed worry and concern for Travis's well-being. However, some other comments they made would once again raise some red flags to the validity of their claims. Rogers mentioned that because of Travis's disappearance and the subsequent search, he wouldn't be able to complete his contracted job with the Forest Service, and that he hoped the search for his missing friend would mitigate the situation. I hope that you'd uh, take into consideration the fact that my friend is currently being (laughs) probed. And unable to thus leave log. My friend is currently in another solar system. (laughs) I can't be bothered with... I can't be arsed. That's another big thing on Love Island right now. Arsed? That's the, you know, last season... You're still watching Love Island? Girl. (laughs) Obviously. Season two is not nearly as good as season one, though. It's kind of a letdown. Some of the girls are so obnoxious that it pains me to watch it. One particular... But the first season, it was all pied off, mugged off. The big saying this season is, I, I can't even be arsed to do with it. I can't be arsed. A R S E D? Yeah, like which bothered? just means I can't be bothered. Yeah. I can't be arsed. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. 
So he he didn't want to be arsed to do his job. <laughs> no, because of couldn't, what was he couldn't probably, be bothered. He couldn't be arsed to deal with what it. was happening to his friend's his, arse. His, his friend is getting probed in the arse. Yeah. Dwayne Walton reported that both he and Travis were longtime UFO enthusiasts. That's something you should admit. Yeah. And that he had also witnessed a UFO 12 years earlier that sounded very similar to the one his brother and the logging crew saw that night. See, Christy, how can you be so skeptical? He'd already seen one. (laughs) He also informed police that he and his brother had made a pact that if they ever saw a UFO, they would get as close as humanly possible. All right. (laughs) Okay. How are you going to know? I told you how some one of my brothers, Zach, is yes. a huge. He's a MUFON car- he, uh, he, card carrying. He is MUFON. a card carrying MUFON. Uh, card member. carrying MUFON member. He has also said that he, if he was ever well, given the opportunity to uh, go on board an alien spacecraft, but the condition is you, we will never return you to your home planet. He's going. Bye. I said, <laughs> are you up. kidding me? You're just going to give all of this up? He's like, I, I have to know. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I could have known and I never, I didn't take them up on it. Well, I just, that's the vampire conundrum, right? Where if you don't, until you do a thing that is un reversible irreversible is the mm-hmm. word that some mm-hmm. some would use irreversible mm-hmm. but until you do that thing you can't know so like the the whole philosophical theory is that if i was a vampire and i said christy you should be a vampire it's super dope you will never age you only drink blood so you never have to eat calories and you don't you sleep all day party all night it's really great sounds and great like, yeah you're like oh that sounds really great uh but the only way for you to truly know if you would like it not just based on my opinion, but if you would like it, it's for me to bite you and turn you into a vampire. Mm-hmm. But once you're that, you can never go back to being mm-hmm. human. So it's a lot like people use it a lot with like breaking up. Like you never know if you're happy or single without breaking up with this person. But once you've broken up, you can get back together. But they'll always know that you broke up with them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that that's this conundrum of like, oh, if the aliens come and say, go with us to space and you'll never see your family again, but you get to explore the outer recesses of the universe the outer recess of the universe might suck ass. Yeah. And the only way that you can know that is to go and then it's undoable. You can't fix it. But if your family sucks ass, maybe there's nothing to lose. <laughs> maybe you Ouch. take a step up. My Ouch. family doesn't suck ass, so I would say That's shocking when I you appreciate leave. the offer. I'm flattered. I'm going to have to say no thank you. Find somebody that hates their family. <laughs> yes. It's the devil you know. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? I just, I love that thought experiment of like you, it's, there are certain things that you can't, it's having a kid. You can't yeah. know if you would really and truly genuinely like it until you have one. And once you have one, it's yours. In those situations, I always think, you know, you already know what you have. Correct. So. Is the unknown better? Yeah. You yeah. have to think. And like with having a kid, yeah, you, you're not going to undo that. It's a lifetime mm-hmm. commitment. When I was thinking, like, do I really want a kid? It was a lot of, would I be more upset to have never had one yeah. than to have one? Mm-hmm. And the answer was yes. Like, I feel like that is a a magical thing to get to experience. So, but a lot of people don't want to experience and, and that's fine. And they, yeah. you know, if you're happy with your life and you don't want to change anything like that up, Nothing you don't want to get on that spaceship called 18 years of them... <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking taking all of your life source. I'm 32. Ask my mom if that stopped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or it it really, not, it doesn't ever stop. It yeah. does not stop. Yeah. So he admits we've been obsessed with UFOs. Everyone in the town knows these people are obsessed yes. with UFOs. It's really no secret. He's also, like, oh, by the way, I also saw one 12 years ago. Which, from my research, to play devil's advocate, apparently, like families can. <sighs> For lack of a better term, like how a ghost might haunt a family. The aliens are in The aliens will pick a family and then the family will experience abductions and visits for for many years. So a lot of people that believe this happened say that points to the fact that he did see one because they they, they knew the Waltons. They were friends with the Waltons. That's true. Well, and also the aliens probably saw the brother's face. And if it looked anything like Travis's, they're like, hey, we got another (laughs) one. We got another one. Well, critics pointed to these statements as proof that this abduction was nothing more than an elaborate hoax. Something they were obsessed with. Yes. Shortly after Sylvanus' interview, Snowflake Town Marshal Sanford Flake 
God. How funny is it <laughs> that his name is Sanford Flake and he is the town marshal of Snowflake? Do you think he changed his name? It was really Sanford Brown, and he's like, I gotta get the flake. I gotta, I gotta go flake. I'm going full flake. Or was he like named Flake? This is my named Flake after the town. No, I think he his name was Flake, and then he was searching for a job. Yeah, and why go to Charlottesville when you could go to Snowflake? <laughs> his last name wasn't Charlottesville. Also, his name's not Joe Flake. It's Sanford Flake. Sanford Flake. God, it might as well thing. be Snowflake. Yeah, it's great. Sanford Sand Snowflake. Yeah, Sandflake. Well, it's a real name that he had in this town, this real town, and he announced that the entire story was a prank engineered by the Walton brothers. The sheriff's theory was that Dwayne set off a lit weather balloon at a predetermined time which made the loggers believe they were actually seeing an unidentified spacecraft in the sky. So it was a little bit more elaborate than... Just, yeah. 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 Okay. There are also reports that about five days before the incident, Travis told his mother that if he were ever abducted by aliens, she shouldn't worry because he would, quote, make it home in a couple of days. Hey, Ma, I just want to level one. <laughs> if I'm ever abducted by aliens, you know me. Look at me. Hey, look at me. I'll come home. I'm coming goes, home. I'm home coming home. Days. It's like saying, uh, yeah, Cindy and I are having some problems. If something were to happen to me, <laughs> Jesus just Christ, maybe, maybe look to her. <laughs> maybe Jesus. she may, she may be responsible for something. Like if you're going to lay that out there, clearly, you know, something is about to happen or you're planning for something. Yes. But to be fair, he and old, uh, Dwayne had made a pact to get as close as possible, which is going to lead you to abduction town. Maybe he said this every day. <laughs> like once a week, he tells his mom this and just, yeah, it just yeah, so honey, happened whatever. that this time it actually happened. <laughs> Ironically. Yeah. For 12 years, every uh, week, every week, she's like, I know, honey, if you get abducted, you're going to be, be home in a few days. Yada, yada, and yada. then this time she's like, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Don't he worry. made right on this promise. If we go more than two weeks, we'll worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, police continued to question Mary Kelly. Which, according to Dwayne, upset his mother greatly. I told you he'd be back in a few days. <laughs> no one's listening to me. Dwayne told his mother that she should only speak with the police on her front porch. So if any time she wanted to end the interview, she could just walk inside. Okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> in theory, this wasn't a bad idea. However, it only furthered skeptics' beliefs that she was hiding something. Or someone. Who's in that house, Mary? Exactly. But Although I this is a good idea. The, to That's... Well, first of all, I don't answer the door ever, <laughs> unless, Same. unless is I mean, Amazon doesn't want to come in your house. Thank you, Amazon. They yes. just drop it off. Anyone else, I know they're coming. But if somebody rings my doorbell Tell in me. the middle of the day, I don't even bother going to the door. No. In fact, I hide. Yeah. Oh, I hide. I have cameras. I hide because we have windows on our door. They can see. They're frosted, but they can still see. And then once they see you, they start knocking or even they're like, ma'am, I'm like, bitch, get off my front porch. Get the hint. I don't have to talk to you. Yeah. That's why I have cameras, though, because I have motion cameras. So I see like past the curb. I mean, I can see like down the street, someone walking up and man, I turn all the lights off, mute the TV. (laughs) It's great. Yeah. I need some cameras. You got to get your ring doorbell. We have one, but... There's some issues with it. Uh, they are finicky. They can get yeah. finicky until you figure them out. But yeah, I love my ring and all my, my cameras. My mom has one too, and it goes off constantly. Like motion you detected get the your motion, front door, right? motion yeah. detected. But it's all the time. It's you. Well, it's you, like anytime you go outside, yeah. you get an alert that there's motion. You're like, I know it's me. I just swapped I've been there. get my mail. <laughs> I've been there. Well, during this time, Dwayne also spoke with William H. Spalding of Ground Saucer Watch a now defunct organization that was once dedicated to using science to resolve controversial elements of UFO reports. Spalding told Dwayne that if his brother should ever return, Ground Saucer Watch could provide a doctor to examine Travis in confidence. He also mentioned that Travis should save a sample of his first urination upon returning to Earth. It's like when you're testing for pregnancy, you got to use the first one in the morning, mm-hmm. right? A good one. It's got the strongest stuff. <laughs> the strongest <laughs> I forget it's what got it the looks most for. alien goo in it. I forget what it looks for in oh, your pee. Yeah. But Something. apparently, according to Kate McKinnon, when she's like, I uh, started to just pee on the ground and they pointed to a little bowl. So I kind of, you know, I sort of wandered over there and started peeing in the bowl. That's the fucking best. Sketch. I just imagine it's a pregnancy test, but instead of plus and minus, just an alien head <laughs> or, a not. or an alien head with a X through it. <laughs> like, have you been abducted or have you not been abducted? Ground Saucer Watch is the one to develop that test. 
<laughs> They're defunct now, though. We'll they never are have defunct it. now, Man. unfortunately. We'll That's never have shocking. it. It's shocking. They're a defunct organization. We're never going to have it. The search for Travis continued, but still no trace of him was found. With temperatures dropping down to below freezing at night, police were concerned that if Travis had survived the initial incident, he would have died from hypothermia, having only been dressed in jeans and a lightweight shirt. The fact that they still hadn't found his body and the crew's ludicrous story led authorities to question if they were actually dealing with a homicide. Again, how did no- <laughs> this would have been my first thought? It's five days later. For and maybe this is before days. Dateline and ID TV and everything. <laughs> maybe I'm bitter and jaded, but my first thought always goes He probably to, got killed. He, he was killed. He, he was, was murdered. Killed. There's no question they strangled about him. it. There was a fight over money. They strangled exactly. him in the woods. They pushed him out of the car. Yeah. Something happened. Or just an accident. Logging they, incident. They didn't want to report it. They didn't want to lose money exactly. or whatever. Yeah. I think that, like that that's the last case. They're today. like, well, wait, wait, I don't think he we can't find this spacecraft anywhere. We can't find his body, so it doesn't look like the elements got him. God, what could it be? Could it... He was out there with five hmm. guys who have all made up a really weird story. I don't know. God, let's go back to the alien theory. Let's try that for a couple more weeks and see if we can find him. Get get some someone rent a plane. Get a prop plane, just fly around the sky. See if you see, see if you see flying alien. around anywhere. Shine a laser pointer up at the sky and see if you bounce <laughs> yeah. off anything. Yeah, God. Carl, you've got a cat. Go home and get that laser pointer. <laughs> Shoot it up at the stars. Mittens see if won't we can mind. Find Bring it out here. <laughs> Bring mittens out Bring here. Bring mittens. Bring mittens. I haven't seen mittens in a while. Well, on November tenth, Rogers and his crew were called down to the station and administered polygraph test by Cy Gilson, a well-respected Arizona Department of Public Safety employee. Gilson's questions asked if any of the men caused harm to Walton or knew who had caused Walton harm, if they knew where Walton's body was buried, and if they told the truth about seeing a UFO. All of the men denied harming Walton or knowing who had harmed him, where his body was, and were adamant that they had seen a UFO. Gilson concluded that all the men were telling the truth. So here's here's some stuff. Go on. First of all, Lie detectors are, are pieces of shit. Yeah, they're pretty... Uh, I mean, except for the Maury Povich show, you really can't trust them. Also, <laughs> season one, Love Island. Oh, do they use polygraphs? They get some polygraphs on the what? dudes. What? <laughs> they film a night of debauchery, quite frankly, where the men are taken out with a guy and the girls are left back at the villa and butlers and the buff show up which are the equivalent of the american chippendales hell yeah my dude yeah <laughs> and everything goes wild the next day they have to play a game where they all get together and they watch footage of people being filmed from the night before and then it's stopped right before nasty stuff happens and then they have to say like uh what do you think's gonna happen and then a polygraph the guys are in another room on a polygraph too or those might have been two different games it's all i've been watching a lot of love island it's all blurred together at this point but they they asked them like are you really into jess would you want to be with her on the outside and max is like they call it the outside they do call it the outside wow (laughs) yeah it's like work on the outside you know we never work on the outside and Max is like, yes, absolutely. I'll take it to my parents. I'll take it to my mom and dad. And yeah, and it was a big... Uh, the lie detector just has mm, determined that yeah. was a lie. I, but uh, in that case, I was telling the truth. In this case, I don't think they're telling the truth. Well, I just think they're not a good admission of, of guilt. George Costanza always said it's not a lie if you believe it. Absolutely. So maybe they convinced themselves that that's I think I could. Be- I think I could beat a polygraph. You think so? I would, 100%. Man, in fact, listener, I'd love to be given one. I would just love to, to do a polygraph. I'd love to do a polygraph. The best polygraph I've ever seen is the Mr. Show, the shoe court, shoe oh, store <laughs> sketch, where he's like, have you ever taken a train apart piece yeah. by piece yeah. so and good. eaten it after you derailed it with your penis yes, yes. yeah <laughs> my and my favorite line is have you ever done crack yes you've done crack what's it like it's great it gets you really high it's crack it's great <laughs> yeah. love that sketch it's so good that's my favorite sketch i think i could beat one you think How, i'd like can you just be given one yeah i mean, I mean I, if somebody has a polygraph machine out there and wants to give us a i test, would love to do it 100 percent. we'll do video it, it. We'll put it up on our Patreon. Yeah. And we'll do an uh, episode about it, too. Man, I bet we know somebody that can get us a polygraph. Easily. I mean, police have them, don't they? Yeah, and I bet, like, private eyes and stuff have them, too. I don't know. <gasps> I know a private eye. Call him. Or her. It's a her. Call her. 
God, what a cool job. Ooh. That's a whole nother. We'll get off I on that. I haven't talked to her in, in many years, but... Uh, we'll, we'll reconnect. Cammie, you might be getting a phone call from me. Well, just when it seemed like things couldn't get any more bizarre, five nights after the abduction, Travis's brother-in-law, Grant Neff, received a midnight phone call from a confused and disoriented Travis asking for a ride from a payphone outside a gas station. Ooh. Without alerting the authorities of Travis's return, Grant and Dwayne headed to the gas station where they found Travis crumpled on the floor of the phone booth. Gross. They gathered him up and the three men drove to Phoenix to meet with Dr. Lester Stewart, the doctor with ground saucer watch. When the men arrived, they were disappointed to learn that they were not meeting an actual medical doctor, but rather a hypnotherapist. Hey, you're not a real doctor? Look at the pocket watch. <laughs> you don't care that I'm also, not a real doctor. They were shocked that this wasn't an actual <laughs> medical doctor that Ground Saucer Watch had organized for the them to alien meet alien magazine sent us to a quack? <laughs> what? This, this is shocking. doesn't make any sense. Also, the police have been spending resources the, resources effort tax time. dollars all sorts of stuff there's been volunteers looking for this guy for going on a week now in november in the forest nobody can bother be bothered nobody could be arsed to freaking call the <laughs> goddamn cops and be like hey by the way he's back that should be That's some rude. sort of it, well first of all it's rude but also is it obstructing an investigation could it's you great. be charged with something like i that? wonder if you could considering i mean well, arguably, if I'm on the uh, arguing on behalf of Walton, is that it's his right to uh, seek emergency medical care if he wanted to drive to Phoenix to see a hypnotherapist. I so I, I mean, that's you know that's his right. But I I think they they might have. I don't know if you have a legal duty to report a missing person. If you've reported him as missing, or, who and was it? Who picked him up? Travis and Grant. So so Dwayne and Grant picked him up. Really? Yeah. Was Mike the one that, I don't know, the brother may have a du- duty to report. I feel like there's some sort of, it's not like just s- being polite. Well, Snowflake is a lawless, sounds like a lawless <laughs> town where, <laughs> where murder so. doesn't happen. Yeah, I guess not. Well, according to Dr. Stewart and William Spaulding, the men stayed with them for over two hours. However, Travis and Dwayne claim that they were there for no longer than 45 minutes and spent most of that time trying to determine Dr. Stewart's medical qualifications. You need to see your medical license. Look at the pocket watch. <laughs> you don't care that I, I don't have a license. I want to be hypnotized. Yeah, I'd love to be hypnotized. I want to do a polygraph test and I want to be hypnotized. Love to be hypnotized. I, want, I don't think, well, I might be able to be hypnotized. I think I would be easily hypnotized. I think you would be hypnotized more easily than me just mm-hmm. because I'm more guarded and more skeptical yeah i'm a big doofus i'm like yep i believe it (laughs) but i what i actually want to be hypnotized about is trying to unlock memories from my childhood Ooh, because i just don't they actually did this on the kardashians once because chloe also couldn't remember a lot of stuff from her childhood and she went to this therapist or a hypnotherapist and they did some stuff and they realized that when she started having these mental blocks was when the OJ thing happened. What? Because OJ was her dad. And her father was defending him, and it was this big controversy within their family because her mom, Chris, was on the side of Nicole, and then her dad was defending OJ. So usually if something traumatic happens, Mm -hmm. that could... But I... I mean, as far as I know, nothing traumatic happened. But until you're hypnotized, but, you know? for all I, I know, thinking, I was abducted by aliens as a kid, and that's and they've put a chip in my brain, and that's why I can't remember anything. Or your butt. Probed you. <laughs> I would rather it be my butt. I hope it's in my butt. Put it in my butt. <laughs> well, that's the Dick Van Dyke episodes. Every time the phone rings, he acts drunk. Yeah. So that's a real. That's such a good episode yeah. of him, of uh, Dick Van Dyke, the actor, not just the character Rob Petrie, of his, how great of an actor he is. That every time this phone rings, that it makes him like slobbering drunk. So I was thinking more like, dog. yeah, I was thinking more like that hypnos- hypnosis, where like they oh. like honk a horn and I like cluck like a chicken or something. Yeah, well, they uh, did that my senior year. We were at a lock in for I don't remember if it was prom. Or something else. You had a hypnotist? Yeah, there was. And I wouldn't have believed it at all. But this, they had about 10 people on stage. And one of them, I'll leave her name out just for... (laughs) (laughs) All these years later. I still remember her name. Protect her privacy. She was a very prim and proper, preppy cheerleader. Was sitting next to someone that she would probably didn't even know their name. Would not have been friends with. Not a cool kid. And... She was just slumped over on him completely out. And so I thought, I really think she's 
under. Like so she wouldn't be comfortable to do that. Yeah, no, she wouldn't have done something like that. And she wasn't funny, so uh-huh. it wasn't going to be like a bit mm. or something. But so I think if you're susceptible to like that kind of stuff, yeah, I think it, I think it could happen, Man, and I'd I think it can that. be used in a. I believe actually Pete Holmes does it too. He does hypnotherapy. Oh, that'd be cool. Speaking of Pete Holmes. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on in his yeah, life. I'd does. like to be friends with Pete Holmes. Oh my gosh. You and my husband both. <laughs> the news of Travis's return quickly spread and the Walton's phone was ringing off the hook with hungry media looking for interviews and fellow believers wanting to lend a helping hand. Of the latter was Coral Lorenzen of APRO, the Aerial Phenomena Research Group. Lorenzen told Dwayne that she could arrange for an examination of his brother in the comfort of Dwayne's home and that it would take place by two actual medical doctors. Dwayne agreed and general practitioner Dr. Joseph Saltz and pediatrician Dr. Howard Candell were scheduled to conduct the examination a couple of days later. To complicate matters even further, in the days leading up to the exam, Lorenzen re- received a phone call from an employee of the National Enquirer. Also known as the paper. <laughs> the employee promised to finance APRO's investigation in exchange for access to the Waltons. Because the National Enquirer's financial resources were far greater than APRO's, Lorenzen agreed to the arrangement. So APRO is Aerial Phenomena Research Group. It's an independent organization. And now they're being offered money by the National Enquirer to fund these doctors helping Travis. Right. Okay. If they have access to the Waltons. In exchange for being granted interviews and whatnot. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fantastic. Sounds above board. <laughs> very. That's well, anything what, the National Enquirer is involved oh, yeah. with is it's very of, above board. It's national. <laughs> That's true. It's one and of they're our, inquiring. Yes. They're, clearly, they're inquisitive. They want to get to know what's happening. Asking the right questions. Upon completing Walton's medical exam... The doctors found he was in good health, despite his ordeal. They also made note of two unusual discoveries. One, on Walton's right arm was a small red spot that looked similar to those caused by a needle injection. However, the mark was not near a vein. Walton would later say he believed this mark came from his logging work. Two, despite Walton having been missing for five days, and according to him having little or no food, His urine showed no presence of ketones. Full of alien goo. (laughs) Once again, critics argued that this proved Walton's story was a lie. If he had really been without food for that long, his body would have gone into survival mode, breaking down stored fats in his system, which would result in high levels of ketones in his urine. As someone who has tried to do ketosis, ketosis, this actually makes me think he may have been abducted because it is so hard to get into ketosis. <laughs> and it was very hard for me, even eating all the avocados I could freaking muster. So I don't know. But this is a, I, this is we, where I feel like science is coming in and proving some really good points. I think so. What was Ted Bundy missing six days and he lost 40 pounds? 25, I think. Or something like yeah. that. 30, 25, 30 yeah. pounds. So, I mean, you, you're you going to lose some weight unless the aliens have an insured, yeah. like, substance. Yeah, they're pumping nutrient full goo, of something. And it keeps you from starving. That's true, because they don't want you to die because yeah. they're probing your butthole. Yeah, they don't want to, but they don't want you to eat a feast. So right. So you just kind of They're not giving maintain. you a Thanksgiving feast. Yeah. And they said he did look disheveled. He had five days worth of gr- growth on his beard that's not hard to do you there's no barber shop or... on the alien ship <laughs> i guess not. it's not like a royal caribbean cruise liner no, he wasn't having an alien spa day <laughs> it should also be noted that no bruises were found on walton's body despite him allegedly being thrown to the ground from several feet in the air i think that's pretty shady yeah they said he was thrown what 10 feet yeah and he would have dislocated his shoulder he would have Easily. bruises and scratches something, something. definitely well, or the, the aliens fixed it all with their space magic. Maybe. Well, then they could have shaved him, too. <laughs> My God. If they're going to go to the trouble to, like, fix his broken bones. The one alien's like, oh, I like his beard. <laughs> Shave I it off. better with Shave it some off. facial hair. His face is very silly. I like it. With the examination complete, the focus turned to what everyone was wanting to know. What happened to Walton in the UFO? I was probed. <laughs> According to Walton, the last thing he remembered after approaching the spacecraft was being struck by the bluish-green beam of light. He said when he woke, he was lying in a reclined bed, and a bright light shone above him. The air was heavy and wet, and he was in pain. 
This sounds like me when I woke up from my uh, wisdom teeth surgery. <laughs> or, or I thought you were going to say when the uh, tropical storm was happening. I was like, <laughs> anytime I wake up from a nap, I think I'm on a oh. spaceship. I'm confused as shit. I was. I went to Gloria's restaurant, which is a oh, restaurant. Oh, love Dallas. Gloria's. They have that bean dip. Oh, and my I God. I sat so down. I, got, I woke up from a nap, went out to lunch. My friend beat me there. She ate all the bean dip. And I, since had Monster. just woken up from a nap, I was like, where's the bean dip? <laughs> Why isn't there any more? And I was like, I'm so sorry. I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> I'm completely disoriented. Disoriented. Don't know what day it is. Don't rough, know where I am. Disheveled. Yeah. Want, in want of bean dip. Yes. It was just. There's all sorts of stuff. So I get on. it. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. Wet. We've all been wet and in pain <laughs> right when we woke up from yeah. a nap. Mm-hmm. At first, Walton thought he was in a regular hospital room. Then he noticed the three figures that were standing around him. They wore orange jumpsuits and were not human. Why do aliens dress like prisoners? <laughs> When we're on Earth, people uh, don't know it that we're not from here. Maybe they are prisoners. Aren't we all just prisoners on this place called Earth? Wow. You know? Maybe who's really doing the abducting here? You know what Dude, I mean? Please free us from our spaceship <laughs> prison. They're trying to get someone to break them out. You're our only hope, Mr. Walton. Oh, man. Look at his face. He can't get us out of here. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. Look at his beard. <laughs> <laughs> then they just get into an argument. And he, five days later, they drop him <laughs> off. They can't decide. They can't come to a conclusion. This is your fault. <laughs> it was yours. <laughs> Walton described the figures as typical of the greys that have been seen in other stories of alien abduction. They were uh, shorter than five feet, and they had bald heads, uh, no hair. Their, their heads were domed very large. They, they looked like fetuses. They had large eyes, enormous eyes, almost all brown without, without much white in them. The creepiest thing about them were those eyes. They just, they just stared through me. Their ears and noses and mouths seemed real small. Maybe, maybe it was just because their eyes were so huge. <laughs> God. Again. He's talking himself out of it. Yeah. Also, they look like fetuses. I don't look like a fetus. <laughs> We've all seen what a fetus looks I've like. I've fully grown. <laughs> First of all, if I ever have a five-foot fetus inside of me, Christ. <laughs> I mean, send me to space because I'm never coming back from that. My God. <laughs> your fetuses on your home planet don't have these sweet brown <laughs> eyes like mine. Yeah. They got just these big old puppy dog eyes. Oh, gosh. Well, fearing for his safety, Walton claimed he jumped off the bed, grabbed a glass-like cylinder from a shelf, and tried to break it in order to have a weapon, but quickly found the material was unbreakable. That's like bar fight style. You just mm-hmm. grab it and smash the glass and ready to He's shank. Doing what he knew. Walton then began waving the cylinder around in an attempt to threaten the creatures while yelling at them to stay away from him. To Walton's surprise, the three beings then left the room. We were going to probe him, but he began to wave around the (laughs) urine sample test tube. Yeah. We didn't have the heart to tell him it was used and not washed. (sighs) Walton said he too then left the room, which he believed to be an exam room, and found himself in an adjoining sphere-shaped room. The only thing in there was a high-backed chair placed directly in the center. Apprehensively, Walton approached and sat down. The room then filled with lights similar to stars projected on a planetarium ceiling. He's sitting in the captain's chair. (laughs) Oh, God, you know how that captain gets. Captain will be so bad. Don't mess with his settings. Don't recline it. Don't push. This is like me in my car. If Tommy (laughs) drives my car, I'm like... Did you fucking move the seat? The seat's back too far. The, the mirrors changed. The seat's back too far. <laughs> he turned the seat warmer He's definitely going to know if somebody's been in his seat. <laughs> the chair was equipped with a lever on the left arm and an illuminated screen on the right. Maybe it was just a video game chair. I think it was. He was at, a, he was at an arcade. <laughs> he was at a video game conference. Yeah, he was at an arcade. Walton said when he pushed the lever, the projected stars began to slowly rotate around him. When he let go, the stars remained at their new position. So what he's trying to describe is this is the control center. I think so. And this is how they get around the universe. It's like a big star map. Yeah, yeah. And somebody is controlling it within this chair. I think so. During all of this, Walton thought he had made out what could possibly be a door on the rounded wall. Afraid of what might happen if he continued manipulating the lever, he got up from the chair to go look for his possible way out. However, before he could find it, another creature entered the room. At first glance, this one appeared to be a human, wearing blue overalls and a glassy helmet. However, after getting a better look, Walton realized the creature's eyes were much larger than a human's eyes and were a bright gold color. This is the warden. Those other orange jumpsuits were the prisoners. This Mm. is the warden for space prison. Walton attempted to ask the humanoid some questions, but the man 
only grinned and motioned for Walton to follow him down a long hallway to another room, which resembled an airplane hangar. Walton claims there were two more spacecrafts in this area, leading some believers to later speculate that Walton had been abducted by the mothership and then taken to a secret alien space station. We've all seen this on the Avengers. You know, you go out and <laughs> exactly. you're in one big ship and then there's a bunch of little ships mm-hmm. on the inside. This is a trope in every alien movie Classic. anybody's ever seen. Upon leaving the hangar, Walton entered another room where three more humanoids were waiting, a woman and two men. You know how you know it's a female alien? The boobs. <laughs> I thought you were going to say she has a bow in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> that too. They also would not answer his questions and instead just looked at him with a dull smile and led him by his arm to a small table. The woman then placed an oxygen-like mask over Walton's face and before he could fight back, he passed out. This is some premium kush. <laughs> Lay back and enjoy. Man, this is like me at the dentist. Uh, <laughs> Fighting it? Yeah, or just... They get, you get a little too much gas, and next thing you know, you think you're being abducted. Have you ever gone to the dentist and had, like, surgery done? I had a massive bad reaction to – they used Twilight. So I've had propofol oh, yeah. for one surgery. I can see why people get addicted mm-hmm, to that. Man, mm-hmm, it's such a clean mm-hmm. – you fall right out. You feel like a million bucks mm-hmm. when you wake A little bit of Great a – Great nap. I had a dry throat. When I woke up, I was like, take me to Whataburger. I need the biggest sweet That's tea. That's me every time I wake up. Dude, the biggest Whataburger sweet yeah. tea. But I uh, I had Twilight for my uh, – my wisdom yeah, teeth. it'll fuck you up. And the lady, I, I mean, she, I'm sure she was perfectly nice, but she was German. She had a very thick German accent. Oh, God. And the type of a chair they sat me in was like a standy-up chair, because I, I, I don't know. I guess you have to stand up to, like, wake up. And there was a full glass wall in front of me. So it was like a, a, bit, a full window, basically, yeah, yeah, in front yeah. of me with a very bright light. And I just wake up, and she's like, you have to stay awake. <laughs> You have to stay awake. Like, and I was like, oh, Christ, no. where am I? I know, am like, I? Did I time travel? I, know, I was like, oh God, I'm being interrogated. Like the Germans got me. <laughs> oh God, we're at war. But it was not, I mean, it was fine. But yeah. after a minute, but when you first wake up, I was like, <gasps> yeah. And I was very convinced I was being interrogated until finally she, and then I, my boyfriend, it was my college boyfriend at the time. I like walked out and he's like, uh, not really like a lovey, romantical kind of guy. <laughs> he's standing there. He's like, uh, you're all right. And I was like, I want my mom. And you just started crying. <laughs> Yeah. I love those videos of yes. people when they've the world just has got out of uh, getting their wisdom teeth done. And they're like, my favorite zombies. is the girl whose brothers convince her zombies yeah. of a time. <laughs> and she's like, get the shovel. <laughs> they do the such shovel. a good job. She's like, no, we can't go to the mall. Everybody's going to be there. And they just like sell it so hard. I love it. I would not be mad if someone did that to me. No, I would think it was very funny yeah. too. So the last thing we heard yeah, of Mr. Walton is he's passed out and the lady gave him some bomb kush. Walton claims the next thing he knew, he woke up outside a gas station in Heber, Arizona. Which happens after you take a huge hit. (laughs) Laying face down on his stomach in the freezing cold. He said he watched the disc-shaped spacecraft hover above the highway for a few moments before suddenly shooting off into the sky, disappearing out of sight. Thinking he had only been gone for a few hours, Walton then stumbled to the payphone and called his brother-in-law to come pick him up. It was only when Grant and Dwayne arrived that he learned that he had been gone for five days. You've been gone five days, man. Uh, I've smoked some weed that made me feel like I was gone for five days, honestly. (laughs) Upon hearing Walton's story, Sheriff Gillespie was understandably skeptical. In an attempt to prove he was telling the truth, Walton offered to take a polygraph, a truth serum, or undergo hypnosis. Why not all at the same time? Oh, man. That's what you call a triple threat. (laughs) Gillespie said a polygraph would suffice, but before he could finalize the arrangements, Dwayne Walton called it off, saying that it had been intentionally leaked to the press. Ah. The plot thickens. That's what, so now suddenly Dwayne, Mr. I saw an alien spaceship, is suddenly Because he knows this is all bullshit. My theory, when we get into it later, is the Walton brothers are both in on this. They're so right. They don't want anything that's going to blow the possibly cover. blow the cover off of what they've done. Once again, the National Enquirer, a.k.a. the paper, the paper, was there to pick up the pieces. And after granting Dwayne and Travis permission to veto the release of the results to the public if they didn't agree with them, made arrangements to administer a polygraph to Travis. That somewhat delegitimizes it, but all (laughs) right. Don't you think? Go on. If you don't like how this turns out, we don't have to tell anybody. We'll shred it. Yeah. And we'll shoot the guy that gave you the Yeah, no one will know. But if you like what it says, then everyone will know. The test was administered by John McCarthy, a man with two decades of experience and very much respected in his field. 
After completing the exam, McCarthy determined that Walton was lying. Based on uh, his reaction on all the charts, it is the opinion of this examiner that Walton, in concert with others, is attempting to perpetrate a UFO hoax and that he has not been on any spacecraft. He went on to say that uh, sometimes Travis would hold his breath in an effort to beat the machine. Nice try, <laughs> idiot. Butthole. I think I would beat it by taking some CBD oil oh, to get just low, get... relax myself and just meditating and and breathing like yoga breaths. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd yeah, have to I think re- I could beat it. I really do. Also, I would just believe that whatever I was saying was the truth. Uh, yeah, I think I would do that one. I would conv- I would have to beforehand really convince But if myself. you didn't know the questions that's beforehand. That's true. That's hard. That's hard. If they said, have you ever murdered someone? <laughs> <laughs> and you can't, you know, in that moment make yourself believe that you have. Not that I, I don't know. know of. Yeah, that's true. That's the thing, too. Who knows? I haven't done the hypnosis yet, so I don't know Maybe what I know. we don't know what we're all capable of. The Waltons, APRO, and the National Enquirer all agreed to keep the results of this polygraph a secret. Well, yeah, Shocking. because, yeah, it <laughs> looks real bad. However, when this decision was made public eight months later, more accusations arose that the Walton story was nothing more than a hoax and a cover-up. The results of the polygraph became extremely controversial, with critics and supporters weighing in from both sides. And that's the thing, too, with polygraphs is if he fails it, everyone's like, it's bullshit and they did it wrong. But if he would have passed it, they would have been like, look, it totally proves it. So that's like the thing. Like, you either trust him or you don't trust him. Yeah, exactly. It's going to... It's either going to prove your theory or disprove your theory, and but they, no one is going to agree on, oh, it really solved this problem. I would maybe have to do more research, but I feel like on Amanda Knox, and this is, as my friend Ian Phillips would say, I've been drunk since then, so I can't fully remember, but I feel like we did a little research because they had uh, administered polygraphs mm-hmm. to Amanda Knox, and it's just like, statistically, they are just not yeah, accurate. Yeah, they're not accurate. And they're not They wide- don't even really use them They're not now. widely used anymore. No. Yeah. In his book, The UFO Verdict, Examining the Evidence... Robert Schieffer called McCarthy the most experienced polygraph examiner in the state of Arizona. In the whole state. However, others pointed to the fact that McCarthy was using 30-year-old outdated methods and, according to records, had asked Walton embarrassing and irrelevant questions in an attempt to produce a negative result. Have you ever farted and blamed it on (laughs) someone else? On an alien? (laughs) This caused a majority of the industry to conclude that this rendered the results moot. Well, I mean, I guess that's, you know, that's an argument that could be made is that if even if at this time law enforcement was still using polygraph, if what McCarthy was using was from the 60s or whatever, any any sort of scientific investigative methods that are being used now, with the exception of like testing fingerprints, which pretty much hasn't changed. Right. Most of the stuff they're using that is if something's 30 years old, you're not going to be using right. that anymore. So, I mean, that's understandable. Despite Walton later taking and passing two polygraph tests, the shadow of doubt from the first one would never be lifted, and the results of this test remain mired in controversy to this day. Thirty years after Travis Walton's book release, he appeared on the Fox game show The Moment of Truth and was asked, in fact, if he was abducted by a UFO on November 5, 1975, to which he replied, Yes. However, the polygraph test determined he was lying. Skeptics point to this as proving that he was not abducted. However, those same skeptics do not believe the polygraph tests that Travis and the other crew members, in fact, passed around the time of the incident. Like Again, said, you're either going to... Yeah, it's, they're pointless. It's, like, convenient mm-hmm. because, okay, well, I think this is... Now it's if he gets the answer that I want him to get, then I believe it. And if he gets the opposite, I think it's bullshit. It's like it's like the Internet. If you want to. Yeah. If you have an opinion, you can either find things to prove or disprove on the Internet. If and you're then Jessica, you choose, you Jessica choose Biel, what you want. And you want to be like, I want to believe the vaccines are bad for you. You're like, all right. You yeah. can find a website that'll tell you what sure. you want to believe. Absolutely. Even if and you can find them that tell the opposite, too. Correct. In an attempt to unlock deeper memories of the abduction, Travis agreed to undergo hypnotic regression. He and his brother, Dwayne, met with APRO consultant James Harder to perform the treatment. Harder found it interesting and unusual that Walton's conscious recollection of the events were the same as what his unconscious memory uncovered. In addition, Walton was only able to access the two-hour period following when he was struck by the beam of light. 
According to Walton, anything beyond that had the feeling of being off limits, and that if he tried to unlock them, he would die. Good God. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. That's like when you, you're you being interrogated by your parents. Yeah, that's true. What'd y'all do last night? Did you Ooh. drink? I don't know. I don't remember. I can tell you. If you just say, I don't know, I don't remember. If I, could t- if I tell you, I'll die. <laughs> yeah, if mom. I tell you, I'll die. Mom. I will die, Mom. mom. Do you want die. me to die? Do you want me to die? die? I will die. I just want to go ahead and point out we have a Mr. Harder. Sheriff Flake, <laughs> Dr. Saltz. Yeah. This sounds like this was all me. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing is just a big ruse. This entire town concocted. Interesting. Well, there are no shortage of skeptics and critics when it comes to this story. But if Travis Walton wasn't really abducted by aliens, why invent such an elaborate hoax? What's really going on? Many believe that the contract Mike Rogers had with the United States Forest Service is a key point of interest. It was no secret that a major fact in Rogers winning the contract bid was because of his considerable undercutting of his competition. However, by the summer of 1975, it was becoming increasingly obvious to Rogers that he was simply not going to meet the predetermined deadline to have the work completed. Rogers applied for a deadline extension to have the work completed by November 10th, and while it was granted, the extension meant that Rogers would be fined therefore making less money than what had originally been decided. So he's offering to do it for cheaper, and now also he's having to pay fines. So Mm -hmm. he's probably, I mean, he's probably operating at a loss at some point. Yeah. As the new deadline quickly approached, it became obvious to Rogers once again that he and his crew were not going to have the work completed. Hesitant to apply for another deadline and incur more fines, Rogers found himself in a difficult position. Furthermore, due to the already missed original target date, the Forest Service wouldn't pay in full for the work until it was complete. And so now he's operating without, you know, invoices being paid. So he's he's in a tough jam. Mm-hmm. He's in a jam. He's in an alien jam. This is when you got to have an alien abduction. <laughs> with the possibility of not being able to pay his crew or himself, and with winter approaching, which would result in less work, some believe that Rogers, along with the rest of the crew, concocted the abduction claim in order to have the forestry contact voided and receive payment in full due to circumstances beyond their control, stopping them from finishing the work. My my question here is, like, it's one guy on their crew. Why wouldn't they be able to finish it without Travis? I guess because they're all mortified. They don't want to go back to the site. I don't know. You can't see my face. Or you're just looking for an excuse to not, because you know you're not going to be able to complete it regardless. Take pity on me. Mm -hmm. Others argued against this idea. Noting that Rogers had failed to complete Forest Service contracts in the past and had been rehired without consequence. That's the government. They don't care. Furthermore, Rogers never made an attempt to invoke the Act of God clause at any time after Walton's disappearance. That's called a force majeure clause. And it's so in... he didn't try and do it. Yeah, it's in most it contracts. It makes sense, but he didn't ever enact it. So I think also his argument was we can't continue to complete our work because they're out there looking for him. Yeah, so oh, they like, couldn't get in there because this act of search it's was a crime still going scene. On. Yeah, yeah, but that's only five days. Yeah, the son of one of Travis Walton's classmates, who also happens to be the nephew of Snowflake Arizona Sheriff, played by James Garner in Fire in the Sky, has spoken out in recent years and also insists that the entire incident was an elaborate hoax perpetrated by a money hungry, drug fueled, and stressed Walton. This uh, theory, I think, we should point out. So I did Chrissy. Did a lot of uh, research on the front end as far as just what Travis's claim was, info from his books. I dug deep on watching videos of Travis Walton as he travels the world talking at alien conferences, and I got real deep into alien message boards, like so deep. Those message boards go so deep. Yeah. And on one of them, I found or this. Or so high, depending on, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the skies above us. Hey. <laughs> but I found this theory on here, and this guy seems like he was a drug fuel when he typed it read it and was like this just looks like a geo city site yes <laughs> this guy so- is cl- clearly blogging from his mom's basement the punctuations he's off. on a lot of drugs something uh, it's very late in the evening yeah well the nephew claims that walton was entrenched in legal issues with ongoing logging contracts and was losing money Walton supposedly concocted the entire hoax to get out of debt and his precarious financial situation. So it's similar to the first one. Yeah. According to the nephew, seeing strange aircraft in the area where Walton was allegedly abducted was not out of the ordinary. The Air Force frequently operated training maneuvers in the area, and campers in the White Mountains had seen aircrafts flying around. 
However, it was common knowledge that it was nothing more than Air Force planes on training missions. That's what the aliens want you to mm. think. It would be convenient for the aliens to abduct you where these other planes already were. The humans are very calm in the area. Mm-hmm. The theory goes that Walton and Mike Rogers got the other men on the crew drunk before driving to where one of the Air Force planes was training. Rogers then sped away once Travis was under the spotlight from the plane while convincing the other men that they had just witnessed a UFO. Later that evening, after rumors of an alien abduction were already spreading through town, Rogers drove Walton to a friend's house on the outskirts of town, where he hid out for the next five days. According to the nephew, when the town figured out it was nothing more than a hoax, Travis's family was ostracized by townsfolk, and his children were bullied in school. Your dad got sucked up by an alien. <laughs> no, he didn't. That's why oh. they're pissed. Your dad didn't get sucked up by an alien. Loser. Liar, you loser. My dad gets sucked up by aliens all the time. You're, nobody stuck anything in your dad's foot. <laughs> However, others have said this theory is not plausible, as Travis Walton was a Mormon who did not partake in drugs or alcohol. Travis himself has fully denied the nephew's theory and pointed to the dangerous logging work as proof that the men would have never been drinking on the job. That's true. I mean, you're operating heavy machinery out there, and maybe, you know, you drink after work, yeah. but probably not wasted on the job driving home. I also think home. it would—a plane looks like a plane— yeah. If you come upon a spacecraft in the sky, you're going to we've all seen planes and it and it moves like uh, like it, what they're describing would almost be like a helicopter, but a helicopter operates like a helicopter. It's like Yeah, and it looks like a helicopter. It looks like a helicopter. A plane also I don't think can just hover 8 feet above the ground or whatever however much it was. Secret military plane we know about. Yeah, maybe. Well, another plausible explanation for making all of this up is simply the desire for fame and fortune. In 1978, Walton published his book, The Walton Experience, in which he tells the story of his abduction and the subsequent aftermath. In 1993, his book was adapted into the film Fire in the Sky, a wildly exaggerated account of what Walton says happened, which was met with moderate success and mixed reviews. Well, so it took three years to write the book mm -hmm. and then another 13 years. Really? Twelve uh, years, fifteen. He'd been planning it since that <laughs> first that first alien spacecraft he saw twelve years back, way back when when Dwayne saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it really, I mean, it's not like he was an instant millionaire. No, but rarely are you. But I'm sure he went. He was on the media circuit immediately. True. Sally Jesse Raphael, lot, maybe Phil Donahue. not maybe not money right away, but the fame yeah. part came right away. Definitely interviews and whatnot. He was in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> then I mean, if you're in the paper, you've made it. You've made it. Because of the inaccuracy of the film, which producers admit was significantly glorified due to Walton's story being too basic. Yeah, basic. Walton has since been collecting hundreds of thousands of emails to get a remake of the movie made. But he refuses to participate in another film unless it is super accurate to the facts and keeps with his new interpretation of what happened, that the aliens were trying to save his life. That's what he genuinely believes now. He's had an epiphany in 2017. Well, who hasn't? <laughs> He has turned down offers from production companies, including the company that produced Game of Thrones, when they refused to allow him to dictate the contents of the film. Well, you're just an idiot. <laughs> if Game of the people that produce yeah. Game of Thrones offers to do anything for just you, you fucking take just it. Just take it. What do you? Stupid? It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. While Travis Walton has obviously made money off of the incident, none of the other loggers have found fame and fortune, leading many to believe they were not in on the hoax or truly believe what they saw. In fact. Reports indicate that one of the loggers was offered money to change his story and speak out against Travis, which he turned down. Sucker, take that money. Mm -hmm. Others have reported that each man received $5,000, approximately 20000 in today's dollars, from the National Enquirer for best UFO case of the year, and that Mike Rogers' logging debts were forgiven. So, I mean, it sort of worked out for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some other random theories as well. These are, yeah, this is where we get into the the deep comments, threads, theories. Some believe that Walton was actually attacked and drugged by his colleagues or another unknown assailant. They posited that Walton really had woken up in a hospital room, but was so confused and disoriented, he mistook his surroundings for that of a spaceship. One doctor even pointed to the red spot found on Walton's arm during the exam was where someone could have injected him with the drugs. This theory, however, is riddled with holes. The red mark wasn't near a vein, and Walton claimed it was from an injury on the job. None of this explains how all the men claimed to have seen the spaceship. No drugs were found in his system, 
And most importantly, there's no motive to support this theory. Yeah, like why would they drug him? Go, why go to all this trouble yeah. when they you got nothing some, out of it? Yeah. yeah, you trick some guy. UFO researcher J.P. Robinson had the opportunity to interview Travis Walton at an alien conference in 2017. After speaking with Travis, Robinson concluded that actually the aliens killed Travis while trying to take off and leave Earth. When the aliens realized what they had done, they decided not to leave him as intergalactic roadkill, as Travis called it, but instead they sucked him up into the ship to save his life. The benevolent aliens felt guilty at what they had done and attempted to undo their mistake. This is the most logical theory. So they killed him on accident. But then they on accident, but then they saved his life. They resurrected him in the spacecraft Correct. and then put him back at this gas station. Correct. I think the theory Seems is likely. that. The, yeah, the theory is that the spaceship was hovering for other purposes. Walton runs down there and they're like, oh, take off. There's a human nearby. No, not that way, oh. you idiot. <laughs> Oh, no, gotcha. you hit him with the laser beam. Mm -hmm. Well, don't just leave him there. Pull him up here. So we, when, because yeah. no one stuck around to help him. Yes. They, dro they didn't see. His friends will help him. The Wait aliens up. They're driving away. They're driving. With a little stretcher. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And they drug him up too. <laughs> and they all had like little lab coats on mm -hmm. and little uh, stethoscopes Well, they're little stuff. overalls. They're little <laughs> do doctor overalls. But they, his, surely his friends will help him. They're driving away. Yeah. Oh, no. So yeah, they uh, that's the theory is that they accidentally killed him. They felt guilty, and they turn around. Why and does him. he now believe this is what happened? Because J.P. Robinson told him. I don't know. <laughs> so J.P. Robinson put this in his head. Yes, he seems like this guy might be susceptible to <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> I don't know. Call me crazy. Wait a minute. Well, then there's what really happened. Online commenter Frida Buttershops put forth the theory. Raccoon had him up a tree for five days and did unspeakable things to him. That's all. Mm -hmm. Frida Butterchumps, you're doing the Lord's work. And if that name wasn't already taken, I'd take it right now. Such a good name. That's a great name. I saw that and I, I put that in the notes. I was like, you'll like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good uh, insane online commenter. Well, luckily, the Internet has lots of them. Full up of them. To this day, Walton maintains that the incident truly happened. He calls those who don't believe in aliens flat earthers, which makes no fucking sense, and rejects any notion that he or his friends made up the incident. He genuinely, I wonder if they made it. So you remember that guy that was on the TV show, The League, that told enough people that he was in 9-11 that he like kind of <laughs> started be to believe it. He like kind of believed it. And then he said it to There's an also interviewer. a documentary called The Woman Who Wasn't There. What's that's that? about that. Same thing? She said she was on 9-11? Yes. She knows she wasn't, but okay. she convinced all sorts of people and yeah. was the head of a board, and uh, it was, it's it's a fantastic documentary. It's called The you Woman should, Who Wasn't There? Yes. Man, I'd love to watch that. really good. But yeah, the guy from The League, basically, and then he goes and he sort of tells the story, and an interviewer is like, oh, really? And then, of course, the journalist looks it up, finally, and then it all comes out that he was, like, several blocks away, mm -hmm. and he loses his Buffalo Wild Wings endorsement. I mean, it ruined his career, but he, he said... I had told this story so many times it got away from me and I genuinely started to believe it. And I wonder at this point, if at the time Travis Walton didn't really get sucked up, but at this point he's told it so many yeah. times that he physic he physiologically believe it, believes which it. Which is why you would pass a polygraph. Yeah. Although he failed the one. On the Fox yeah, show. So, so, and that's way after. Who's to say? Who's to say? In an interview with Wired Magazine, the author indicated that Walton reacted to seeing the Exxon station where he had been left. With the weariness of someone who survived something traumatic. Likewise, others who have met him said that he didn't seem comfortable with his notoriety and fame, and that they got the impression he wished it had never happened. Well, sometimes we want something and then it comes true and we wish that we had never had it. The vampire so. conundrum. Mm -hmm. Another journalist said Travis is a very genuine person and his demeanor lends credibility Man, if it's all made up, he's managed to maintain the lie for a long time, and he decided he's going to keep this show going till his death. Well, some some people do that. Yeah, I some mean, people's whole life's a lie. <laughs> uh, seriously, your whole life is a lie, and yeah. you just you believe your own hype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, what is uh, that? Get me Roger Stone. Have you watched that? No. Oh man. I think oh, it'll, it'll piss me off. Too it'll much. make you mad, but it's really good. But that's a person that he has like wholly forgotten that he was an active participant in Watergate. Like yeah. just he loves he Richard Nixon. He doesn't think that Richard Nixon did anything wrong. He just for those of you who don't know, Roger Stone's an American political I guess he's kind of a consultant now mm -hmm. and he's kind of like a fixer and he's he's a, actually the one that's responsible for the Obama birther movement mm -hmm. that p planting that seed a of fixer slash a fucker upper. Yes. Um, he does like disinformation yeah, campaigns yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, he 
had like a really shady beginning but he's created this sort of persona for himself and it's like you make this caricature of yourself mm-hmm. and you believe that lie versus who you genuinely are yeah it's interesting just eventually gets swept under the rug and nobody mm-hmm. really talks about it true anymore. and then all of a sudden they find out and you lose your buffalo wild wings endorsement <laughs> damn which is the saddest thing damn. that happened to one dr leo sprinkle again come on these can't be real names <laughs> At the University of Wyoming, did mental tests on Travis, which Travis claims... They revealed a total normal mental score of me. <laughs> total normal mental I score. I wrote that down verbatim from a video, YouTube interview with him. <laughs> what is... Yeah, and normal is pretty... Vague. I have a normal mental score. It's wow. like, stop yelling that. Dr. Jan Heinrich of Project Blue Book, which is a series of systematic studies of UFOs conducted by the United States Air Force interviewed Walton and issued a press release that he was not perpetuating a hoax. So he points to that as well as that. That's more proof that he was above That's more board. legitimate than the other things. A little bit. Walton now tours around UFO conferences and collects speaking fees for commenting on the incident. He also sponsors his own UFO conference in Arizona called the Skyfire Summit and even appeared on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Season 8, Episode 19, where he met up with the whole Kardashian clan when they traveled to the desert to hunt aliens. He uh, has made a name for himself. He made it to the Kardashians. I mean, yeah, how much? I mean, he's famous. Fame and fortune. Fame yeah. and fortune right there. That's You've made it if you, if you get on that show. I'm pretty sure there's like a fee you can pay and you can go to the part of the forest that he was sucked up in. The road is kind of blocked off, I think, now, but as close as you can get and go at night. Like Oh, him. I saw a YouTube video earlier of a guy there they go last there? year. That- okay. There, he just it's like a campground yeah okay you can just go out there yeah so what do we think i definitely think that the aliens accidentally killed him <laughs> and sucked him up to make him better that's probably what happened or the whole thing was made up i think it's the first one i think this whole thing was made up by he and his brother and i think mike rogers was in on it too i do think the rest of the crew probably didn't know what was going on therefore the polygraph questions also were asked in a way that... They could say yes easily. Yes, and they weren't specific. It yeah. wasn't... Did you see did something? Did you see an alien... Sp- it was, did you see a UFO? I mean, anything l- is unidentified, flying True. object in the sky. True. It wasn't, did you see a beam of blue-green light hit your friend and throw him to the ground, knocking him unconscious? Yeah, it was more like, did were you out in the forest? Yes. Did you see something unusual? Yes. Mm-hmm. Were you scared? Yes. Yeah. Did it hurt your friend? Yes. yes. Yeah. All of those things are true. Yeah. I think that the logging contract is a very good theory because he didn't invoke the act of God clause, though, makes me wonder. Yeah. However... His debts were forgiven. True. So made the government felt bad. Mm-hmm. And it, and they did get five thousand dollars, which yeah. in the seventies that's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. I mean now it's a lot of money. I'd take five. You know? I think there's they were known UFO buffs. He had told his mom five days before if so this she ever worry. happens because he he knew they were planning it. He didn't want her to be worried. If you fake your own death, you know you'd tell someone like, "Don't worry." Yeah, I think honestly, him telling his mom that is one of the more telling things damning pieces that of evidence this, this was a, a hoax yeah interesting and then he probably was just staying at a friend's house or doing drugs a cabin or something yeah, for hanging out for five days and eating doritos yeah doesn't so, sound so bad no no well That's tell us what, what you think. think yeah let us know what you guys tell think. also if any of you have experiences with aliens have seen aliens have been abducted by aliens please or know someone know. please shoot us a dm if you are an alien shoot us a dm yeah an email if you listen to this up in another solar system on your fancy please leave us an itunes review app that none of us know about we'd love an itunes review we it's just bleep, it throughout, blorp, the, bleep blorp. throughout the whole ship everyone loves it we especially like the story where christy poops her pants <laughs> yeah well and gave us a big chuckle thank you thank you as people who put the up butts it's always yeah. great to hear stories about stuff coming out true. of butts why does you, everyone think aliens stick stuff up butts because they do don't they well i don't know have aliens been to the america i think they have you think the aliens have visited yeah okay do you not no i think they have Do you believe in aliens? I thought you, yes i thought i thought that you didn't think that aliens had ever visited i knew you believed no. in them I'm, no, I'm sure that they have. I don't believe in this story. This particular one. But I, I do think that they have probably made contact in certain ways. Oh, yeah. God yeah. is aliens. As far as going up the butt, I think it's because <laughs> it's one of the easier ways to get something up in you. That's true. Gag That's, reflexes. I mean, doctors do it for colonoscopies and true. whatnot or other true, true. medical procedures. So. True. 
Yeah, I feel like going down your throat. It's kind of like, eh, There's bleh. more, and you got to like, I don't know, it seems more. And you can bite, there's teeth. More difficult to do than if you just go right up somebody's butt. There's teeth in the mouth. The butt's smooth mm, sailing. Hopefully. Ideally. If you got teeth in your butt, then. <laughs> Call bigger, a, bigger issues. Call a doctor. <laughs> Well, many of you have asked if we have a Patreon where you can donate to the show. We do. Our show will always remain free, but if you wish to donate to help offset the cost of making and hosting the show, you can visit Sinisterhood.com and click on Patreon in the top right corner. You can get some sweet perks like Patreon-exclusive content, a Sinisterhood sticker, membership to our exclusive Patreon Facebook group, a special shout-out on the show, and a monthly bonus mini-sode. Make sure you stay around after the sign-off to hear your special shout-out. Absolutely. Also, a lot of you have been tagging us in pictures of you wearing some of your sweet Sinisterhood merch. Keep doing that. We love reposting pictures, and you guys all look fantastic. Mm -hmm. I personally am obsessed with my navy heathered keep it creepy shirt where it says keep it creepy on the front and the devil rules the airways on the back i wear it all the time i have it in black and like it as well yeah and if you see me and wearing it in public please don't judge me because it's just very comfortable and yes i wear the shirt of the band that i'm in Mm -hmm. um but if you also want to look get some badass merch head to sinisterhood.com and click merch in the top right corner it'll take you to our shopify shop where you can get all kinds of good stuff like hats mugs t-shirts baby clothes sweet canvas bags and all kinds of stuff so head to sinisterhood.com and click merch in the top right corner one of the best things you can do to help us grow is like review and subscribe on itunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts and please tell a friend or an alien who you think would like us to check us out it means so much to us and really helps small podcasts like us get more exposure you can follow us on instagram and twitter at sinisterhood pod and like us on facebook at sinisterhood christy where are you at i am on twitter at christy or gtfo and on instagram at christy m wallace and you post, heather y'all say you posted a really great picture of ella being a boss baby today oh she is a boss baby she's all, my boss always oh, oh she's my boss too <laughs> she's your boss definitely. she's you don't get much time off but it's a good gig she's the executive producer. and there's and there's no zero pay <laughs> <laughs> but she's a she's a fantastic boss. She's Wouldn't have it any other way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and where are you at, Heather? Oh, I'm on Twitter at MCK versus the world, and on Instagram at Heather versus the world. You can see a dope picture of me at my work casino night. It looked I had a, a spray tan on, and I got professional oh. makeup. So don't let, don't let that fool you that I look like that all the nice. time. <laughs> it was a very special uh, occasion. But check all that out. Make sure to follow us. We love interacting with our fans, and we love talking to you guys. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for supporting the Patreon. Here are your special Patreon shout outs. Joe Stanford. Nicole Petiti. Sarah Sabala. Daria Maxwell. Krista Morrow. Haley Grammer. Kelsey Moss. Brittany Brown. Taylor Doran. Angelique Farnham. Crabosaurus Rex. Dallas Thompson. Shout out Dallas. Sydney. Allison Plemons. Solana Lux. Sabrina Teague. Beth Salaha. Salaha. Mm hmm. Salaha. Beth Salaha. Heidi Ullman. Alyssa L. Williamson. Diva New. Ooh, I wonder if there's a Diva Old. Chelsea, Chelsea Byerly. Anthony Clark. Lakin. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it so much. Please be sure to join the Facebook Patreon group so we can interact with you guys. We take suggestions for our live monthly Q&As as well as our mini uh content and our video content. Yes. So we love interacting on there and just kind of telling you guys what we're doing, what we're up to generally. So it's the best way to interact with us on Facebook. Keep it creepy. <laughs> Say-